Ultra Marines! It's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Otherwise known as Warhammer 40k Space Marine. This is part of a series which has been around for several decades now and started off life as a tabletop game, and then migrated into various spin-offs and books, and now a big-budget sci-fi shooter, one of the most saturated and competitive genres in video games. In the game, you play as Captain Titus of the Ultra Marines, who is a cross between an upstanding gentleman and a chainsaw-wielding maniac. Kind of an odd mixture, but it works. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect from Space Marine when I started playing it. As a relative newcomer to the series, I don't fully understand the backstory, but you don't need to. If there's orcs in front of you, you annihilate them. The very first impression that Space Marine gave me was of a Gears of War clone. But after playing through the entire game, I can say with certainty that it's not. Sure, it has a similar camera perspective, and the characters in the game look like overgrown hulking meatheads. And the color palette consists of desaturated earth tones, but that's really where the similarities end. There's no doubt that Space Marine was inspired by the excellent Gears of War series and others like Halo, but it does its own thing. First and foremost, I would like you to notice that there are no conveniently placed concrete barriers to hide behind. The battles in Space Marine are well orchestrated and are a lot of fun because the game floods you with bad guys particularly later in the game when there's waves of orcs attacking you while snipers shoot you in the head from afar. At no point can you ever just hide behind anything and shoot all of the enemies in the head, because they'll lob grenades over you and eventually just swarm you anyway. At some point during every battle you either run out of ammunition or are forced to turn to your chainsword and axe. So combat in Space Marine is 50-50 shooting and melee. And once your shield, which is like an overshield in Halo, runs out, you then start losing health. And there's no health packs. The only way to regain health is to perform finishing moves. Or to kill enough enemies to fill up your super ultra power thing on the bottom left, which makes you super powerful for a brief time and also regenerates your health. And this may sound easy at first, and earlier in the game it is, but eventually you'll find out that enemies can still hit you with things like grenades while you're chainsawing bad guys trying to regain health, only to find out that you die mid-process. At some point in Space Marine, the game forces you to use every single weapon in your arsenal to get through each battle. You'll have to take out enemies from a distance, hit them with grenades, machine gun them with an air of futility, and then hack and slash them to death, while desperately attempting to regain some of your health. It's all quite enjoyable. Space Marine kicks ass. The world on which Space Marine takes place is actually quite interesting and well designed. The environment and architecture seem to be inspired by European cathedrals, and at times it looks like you're playing straight out of a World War I postcard, with trenches, siege guns, and blown up buildings in the distance. It's a shame that Space Marine is so desaturated, because the eye draws an immediate comparison to another giant action series, Gears of War. And I'm not going to say that one game is necessarily better than the other outright. Gears of War is funnier and gives you more multiplayer options. While I find the combat in Space Marine far more interesting. And I'll talk more about that in part two because Warhammer 40k Space Marine is a game that sci-fi action shooter fans 
really shouldn't miss. We've been watching the Xbox 360 version, this is also on PlayStation 3 and PC. See you back here in part 2.